Good morning, my YouTube friends and family. So, it is the day after uh, my big hangout with uh, Steve Shives, Bionic Dance, um, Our Godless World, um, Robin Dupree Reed, Christopher Maute, um, um, Darren Kern, who am I forgetting? 13 Heathens. Um, Dorian Stratton. I am really grateful that you uh, you all made the effort to come to commit to the time that it took to do that well. Um, I, I'm sincerely grateful for um, the opportunity to share my heart with you guys um, and to uh, communicate the gospel with you and with, um, with the people who are watching. We had over... Um, when we started out, we almost immediately spiked to 100 viewers. Um, we got, I think at the top, about 130 to 135 viewers. But the whole time, we never dipped under 100. We always stayed around the 116 to 125 mark for viewers. So I think people found it to be an interesting discuss discussion nonetheless. Um, <clears throat> I'm really, as for myself, I'm disappointed in my own performance. Um... I don't think that I really represented um, uh, represented my position all that well. Um, I wasn't prepared for the rapid um, fire of questions, and um, and a lot of them were good questions. A lot of them were very fair questions. A lot of them uh, I do know the answer to, but under the pressure of uh, the moment, it just wasn't coming to me very quickly. So. I apologize to um, not just the atheists who, you know, probably thought that I did a poor job, but also to the Christians who um, probably could have done a much better job of representing our position than I did. Um, with that, I want to follow up on a couple of things um, that were said during the uh, during the hangout last night. Um, Bionic Dance, you asked why the, why does there have to be a human sacrifice? Why does there have to be a human sacrifice for the forgiveness of sin? And um, the reason for that, I know you didn't like my answer at the time, but it's the way the Bible is set up is that there's always been a sacrificial system um, to for the covering of sins. And we see that all the way back at Genesis 3, after the fall, when God made the first animal sacrifice to cover Adam and Eve when they were naked. And that is the scarlet thread that runs throughout all of Scripture because the Bible says without the shedding of blood there can be no remission or no forgiveness of sin. So that's what the animal sacrifice system was all about going throughout the entire uh, history of the Old Testament. Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, the Passover. These were all types and shadows of the coming of Jesus Christ. That is a scarlet thread that runs through the Old Testament and comes to completion in the Gospels where Jesus, uh, in, John, in the Gospel of John, when John, is, uh, John the Baptist is baptizing people and Jesus makes his appearance, he says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That's what Jesus is. He is the final perfect sacrifice for the forgiveness of sin. And, and again, Jesus wasn't just a man. He was fully God, fully man in the flesh without sin. And that's the only reason that his uh, sacrifice is sufficient for the forgiveness of our sins. Now, maybe that still doesn't answer your question that well. Um, for um, Darren Kern. Uh, Darren, you were kind of giving your testimony and saying that one of the things that um, kind of led you into atheism away from religion was unanswered prayer. Well, what if that unanswered prayer was simply God saying no? Um, because somebody makes a request of God um, through prayer does not necessarily entitle you to have that prayer answered the way that you would like it to. Um, prayer is usually answered one of three, three ways. Yes, no, or not now. So your unanswered prayer might have been a no, because God knows what's better for you in his wisdom, uh, or it might have been a not now. Um, Steve Shives. Steve Shives, at one point you said, um, when I asked the question, what evidence have you looked at that's compelling? 
And you said, you know, the one thing that kind of bothered you is the fact that there's stuff. Why is there something instead of nothing? And you, you kind of close by saying, well, you know, I just have to be okay with that question being unanswered. Please don't be. Please continue to seek that out. Because, look, from, from an atheistic worldview and from an evolutionary worldview, it is impossible that not, something can come from nothing. It is impossible for life to come from non-life. You know, God created all of this. All of this is created for his glory to demonstrate himself to us. The universe is huge as a demonstration of how huge and how glorious God is. So don't let that, don't be satisfied with that question being unanswered. Continue to seek out the answer to that question. Why is there something instead of nothing? The answer is because God made it. And God made it to make himself known to us. Um, Dorian, I'm, I'm really glad that you made a follow-up video because it was frustrating. You're one of the guys I wanted to hear from because I liked your video response. And uh, so I'm glad you made a video response. I posted that and approved it to the Hangout. And um, so... Hopefully next time we do it, we can have microphone issues um, worked out. And I really liked in your follow-up video um, to the Hangout how you said that, you know, you would like to see Atheist Hangout and really, um, I think you said to knock yourselves down a peg or two, to really put yourselves under the light of scrutiny. I think that's, a, I think that's great. That's kind of what I wanted to do for myself last night is to put myself and my faith under the light of scrutiny. Um, I don't think I necessarily did the greatest of jobs, but I, I'm, I'm grateful to see that you're willing to put yourself in your own worldview under that same light of scrutiny as well. Um, our Godless World, thankful that you were able to make it. You came in late, but you were a great contributor. I was thankful that you made it in there. Um, Christopher Maute, dude, I really dig you a lot. You were really uh, honest and forthright. You joined us on the Bible Thumping Wingnuts After Show. Um, contributed really well there. Uh, you know, I I like you. I hope that we can continue the conversation. Um, let me see here. Who might I be missing? Thirteen Heathens. I am really grateful that you told everyone. <laughs> Now, whether anyone's going to heed this or not, actually, uh, we'll see. But when you said, hey, Matthew 4.19 is not a fundamentalist. Thank you for that. Um, I like to think of myself as fairly reasonable. However, I know that to some degree I've earned that label for myself in the way that I've behaved in the past making videos and on comment feeds and things like that. So I'll, I'll own that and um, hopefully... Um, with my future behavior and future videos, people will come to the realization that you have that I am not a fundamentalist. Robin Dupree Reed. There's so much I could say. Um, I thought that um, you came in there with your nose in the air and uh, clearly thinking that you were better than me. Um... And maybe that's because you've looked at my past videos and you've seen my behavior and my attitude and you came in very guarded and I don't blame you for that. Um, you continued to hold on to the, the line that, uh, that I made in the video about the atheist lifestyle in spite of the fact that I apologized to you and corrected that in the comment feed. So I hope that you have a category of grace and forgiveness in your heart for that. I apologize to you for that. Um, the other thing I want to say is you had said in the hangout that I'm not a sinner. I'm not a sinner. Um, I have bad news for you, Robin. You are a sinner because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You're no exception in this case. Um, if you've ever told a lie, you've broken that commandment. That makes you a sinner because sin is the transgression or the breaking of God's law, according to uh, 1 John. Um, so you've broken his laws, whether you like them or not. Um, when a, a criminal doesn't stand before a judge and have, and, and they're not entitled to complain about the laws. They're simply bound to be judged by them. And you will be judged by that standard, by the lie that you've told. Jesus said, if you look with lust, you commit adultery in your heart. If you've been angry, you've committed murder. Um, if you've ever taken God's name in vain, the Bible says that you are an enemy of God. 
So Robin, bad news. You are a sinner who desperately needs to get downwind from yourself and realize that. Um, and when you realize that, look to the cross and see the kindness of God so that you don't have to experience his wrath for all of eternity. Look to the cross and see the kindness of God. Romans 5.8 says, um, For God demonstrates his love to us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And I would be in the same boat if it weren't not for God's grace. You know, um, I was a God mocker. Um, I used to think awfully highly of myself. And, um, you know, the Bible says that God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Pride is the greatest barrier of man between heaven and hell. Um, so I urge everybody who participated, who watched, and who's watching this now to humble yourselves. Realize that you're a sinner. And turn to Christ. Turn to Christ who died on the cross to save you from your sins, who resurrected three days later, um, proving himself to be God. That's all I got you guys again. Thank you very much for participating. I really hope we can do it again. I hope we next time maybe we can do it in smaller chunks because I think we all agreed it was a bit of a hash having nine people in the hangout. So, um, But I would welcome each and every one of you again, either on a one-on-one -on -one basis or two-on-one, three-on-one, four-on-one, whatever, but maybe keep it in a smaller format. So thank you all very, very much, and God bless you all. Um, consider the cross, consider your sin, and uh, turn to Christ. Bye.